they say when you're an artist you should constantly be creating but i am unable to do that hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel um today we're at home nothing fancy no makeup no no ambi okay <laughs> well no ambi in the sense you're good to know no fashion things no dressing up no modeling today just me and my paintbrushes like i always say my bio it, it says i'm a visual artist and i don't post stuff about that and that's what i'm actually studying in uni when i go to university and sometime in the coming months when i go to uni that's what i'll be studying fine art yeah so today we're gonna like spend the day with me painting being in the other side the other side of my life the art side the career side of level modeling of course the main career the main show you know the vibes so mm, i started painting yesterday actually I do have a few clips from yesterday. I will insert them somewhere. Where I was priming. I think I did take when I was priming. Yeah, I stretched my canvas on my wardrobe door because <laughs> your girl do not buy frames, but we move. So sad that I want to. I was painting yesterday till 3 a.m. So I basically didn't sleep. Still have paint on my hands and all that. So we're going to just look at some of the progress I have on the canvas right now. Yeah, that's what we got. Okay, so I remember asking um, on my Instagram where people wanted to learn from me. So today we're going to learn, whilst we're doing the art stuff, we're going to learn my creative process. Yeah. What's, what my creative process is like and in general for when I'm coming up with outfits or when I'm painting or just in general how i get my creative juices flowing i i don't have a set formula for that i just uh, get a lot of my inspiration from reading especially i read a lot of books i know people say it's hard to read but like when you want to tap into reading you just start reading stuff that you like you like binge read on stuff that you like I read a lot of books, like fiction books, still on. I branched out a little bit into like psychology books, mental health. Yeah, understanding humans. Yeah, that's what I recently branched out to. But when I started, I was reading like fiction all the time fiction 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 on fiction like i'd read three books in a week that's how bad it was i also watch a lot of tv series when i'm watching tv series i actually don't read i can't balance the two so if i'm gonna watch tv series and i'm watching tv series for a month i won't be reading for a month if i'm reading for two months i won't be watching tv for two months but basically that's what's up so i get most of my ideas from TV series, from fiction. I read horror, I read sci-fi, I read 
detective mysteries, crime, whatever, all that, and romance as well, because <laughs> who doesn't want a little love in their life? Yay. <laughs> Living through others. Yeah. So, my favorite book, I'd say, is Tell Me Your Dreams by Sydney Shelton. It's a messed up book, okay? I recommend you read it. I will insert the book over here and i will insert a painting i did of the book inspired by the book over here so yeah what else my art a lot of it is like people's stories i remember when i was doing i should stop doing this i have this tendency of not creating art because i don't they say when you're an artist, you should constantly be creating. But I am unable to do that because I feel like my... I don't want to say my art always has meaning, but my art always is projecting something that's going on in my life that's like major or intense. So if I have like intense feelings, that's when I create the best art if i try to like create art whilst i'm like neutral and all that yeah it's it's gonna be shitty art i should stop doing that i should create more because i want to have a solo exhibition sometime before i leave for school and you gotta have a lot of pieces for that so tick tick can't build room in a day but i'll try (laughs) <laughs> so yeah I remember when I was doing item yeah I was doing I wanted to exhibit at fabric party and I was doing paintings and like the inspiration for my paintings came from people from I remember I did a poll on Instagram and I was like Tell me something intense about yourself. Tell me something intense that's sad, intense that's crazy, intense that's like happy. And I got quite a number of responses. I didn't end up doing all of the paintings. I will finish them. I did like two. I remember I did one from my friend in high school and one from my current friends. And yeah. One of them got bought. The three faces one someone purchased that one mm-hmm. so yeah i don't know if i'm gonna include the other one that's saved in the exhibition i did put it up for the raffle oh yay mm. uh, I, yeah that's just how i get my inspiration uh people the things i read things i watch as well as music like i don't just listen to any type of music because my music I listen to it a lot. So then in turn, it affects how I think, how I see the world, how I see people. So I can't just listen to anything, to be honest. So yeah, my music is a big, it's a part of it. My music is a part of it. It influences as well the way I create. So that's inspiration. Yeah, that's for inspiration. And number two in my creative process is when I'm not doing planning. So when I plan my stuff out, I get inspired. I'm inspired. I think of an idea. Planning, I sketch it out. Even if I can't seem to like sketch it out at that time, I just write it down. Like Just write what it is as it is when you're thinking about it. That's what I do. I just write it as it is. So that I don't forget because sometimes I will not have pen and paper. I'll not have a pencil and paper to sketch. I will just record myself talking about what I'm thinking about. Then later, I'll go back to that for reference so that I can put the idea on canvas or in an outfit or whatever. Or concept for shoot. Yeah, basically. So... Yeah, planning, then what's after that? How I'm going to do it. No, that goes under planning. How I'm going to do it goes under planning. What do I need? Oh, that goes under planning. Under planning, I plan 
sketch out the stuff, voice out the stuff, write down the stuff. Then I think about the color palette, what colors I want to use, what kind of design I want to do, um, what else? Colors, design, form, medium. Medium is always important for me. I well, I would say I like textured work. I used to not do textured work. I try to do most of my texture in painting. Like how I layer the paint is how I used to do most of my texturing. But I didn't, I didn't like it. So I started like using, because I love fashion as well as fine art, I started try to find a way to mix the two all the time i try to find a way in my paintings if i use fabric to add texture like right now the painting i'm working on like the places that are blank i want to add denim and buttons and fashion fixtures sewing utensils all of that in the spaces and what else? I might draw something on the denim as well. I'm still thinking. But yeah. Basically, that's what you do during planning. You just voice out all of the stuff you're thinking about. Try to put it together. So you can see how it works. And so that before you put your brush on the canvas. You at least have an idea of what you're doing. Okay. I don't always know what I'm doing. I won't lie. I will sometimes paint and just go with the flow. Like this one, I know I want to do the denim, but I don't know if it's going to work. You see? But I'm just going with the flow, painting it how it is and stuff like that. And then so for the third one, which is execution, that's when you sit down and start, just start painting. You just let your paintbrush take you where it's going because, you know... To be honest, your hand knows. I feel like I feel like your hand knows better than you overthinking it. So just listen to what your hand is saying. Then sometimes as well, if you look, just step back. When you're painting, keep taking a step back to look at your stuff. Don't just splash paint on the thing. I mean, okay, there is art like that. I. I'm not a judge. There's art like that. You just splash paint and all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People have different creative processes. But yeah. When I'm executing. I'll paint, paint, paint. Step back. Look at my work. Am I happy with it? Is it going where I wanted to go? Sometimes it turns out better than I thought. Sometimes it doesn't. And yeah my one problem is when i'm creating the way it's coming out in my head is the way i want it to come out on paper and sometimes even i myself fail to make it come out the way i want it to come out when i'm thinking about it so yeah that's that's yeah 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 so that's basically my creative process i feel like challenges that might come up challenges that may come up when you're creating uh, is creative's block that's the biggest challenge clutter and confusion like when you're creating you need to organize your thoughts i even if it's intense even if you like want to create something intense you still need to organize your thoughts because that's just me i don't know how other people do it but for me to be able to create something, to express something, even if it's intense, even if it's not intense, even if I want it to be dark, even if it's like, a lot of my art is dark, so let me just say, let me not go and say even if it's light, because it's, it's never light, it's always dark. So, even if it's dark, I still need to organize my thoughts, I still need to think about it, I still have to write it down voice it out you know sometimes it's it's not always meticulous planning it's just write your stuff down put it in order 
think about it because order matters when you're doing paintings it matters order matters because your vision how you see it it has to work on the canvas your elements have to complement each other they have to if they're complementing or repelling each other it still needs to be in order okay so yeah what else Ah, uh, dealing with creators block I do not have any advice for that except to change your environment when you feel like you have creatives block just change your environment Chinja Kwauri I used to get a lot of creative block and I just literally just stand go outside take a walk different routes like a route I don't use normally Oh, that week I'd literally be going out all the time just to like be around different people, see my friends, go places that I don't usually go. Yeah, go places that I don't usually go. But yeah, that's how you deal with creators blog. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just need to sleep it off. Sometimes you just need to binge watch a series and read a book and you'll be fine. Sometimes you just need to journal as well journal how you're feeling creatives block will run away from you yay what are the problems as a creative expensive okay um (laughs) art supplies are freaking expensive no lie Those prices are actually out of pocket. Mm-mm. Our supply prices are out of pocket. No, 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 no. It's expensive. That I think that's that, that's another problem for me, because I am not a big artist, guys. I am a. I haven't even gone to school yet. I know you don't need to go to school to be an artist. But, like, I feel like I need to go to school to get, like, some fundamentals down. Because I didn't do art at A-level. I dropped art in Form 4 after I drastically failed it. I got an E for O-level art. Yeah, I got an E for O-level art. Which is partly my fault because... I didn't do the whole... How many pages are you supposed to do for that thing? Eight. I only did like three, four. A story for another day. Why I did that. Uh-uh. But yeah. I'm actually surprised I didn't get a U. I did get an E. And I I don't even know why I was disappointed. I'm crazy also. <laughs> when I didn't do the work. I was disappointed and I dropped art. And... What did I end up? I ended up doing travel and tourism, computer science, and environmental management in lower six and upper six. So I don't have like. I feel like I'm lacking. You know when you, okay, yeah, I'm good at art, but I feel like I'm lacking something. There's something that I might get in school. We'll see. So, yeah, that's why I'm going to school. But, like, yeah. I'm not a big artist. I'm not even a small artist. I don't know how to categorize myself. But I don't sell a lot of my art. Maybe that's my problem also. I don't market it. and I don't create a lot of art. But, like, you know, when you invest, like, fabric party. I invested a lot of money. <laughs> Let me actually tell you how much I invested. I invested 250 bucks in buying paint. What did I buy? I bought paint. And don't think I bought a lot of paint. Like, mm-mm, that's not the case. I bought these. Uh, they were two of these, blue and red. Then I bought these, two as well yellow and green i basically bought the primary colors because you can mix any color from those colors and then i trusted box buddies these are like always the most quality paints 
the two paints i bought those i bought two boxes of these bought this two paint because i'm in love with red i have to have red paint all the time mm -hmm. all the time i feel like this is gonna be my theme color when people look at my art they see red and they're like no that's cookies art what paint brushes wait 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 i bought a set i bought these then i also bought like bigger brushes and like you don't want to know you don't you don't want to know how expensive that <laughs> but yeah i spent 200 bucks didn't even buy my own canvas actually i got from a friend because i had overspent my budget on materials so yeah i will paint for 250 paint what else I, I bought oil pastels and chalk pastels as well because i like mixing i like mixing media these are my best friends when i'm painting with acrylic because you know those you know that effect you can't put with paint you gotta you gotta use those you gotta use those and oil pastels as well they work the same they work the same so that's what i bought i there's a lot I bought ink also. I was being experimental. I bought yeah, so like I bought a lot of stuff. And canvas I didn't buy for myself. I got from a friend. Frames as well. Got from a friend. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had bought. Like I bought canvas yesterday. Mm hmm. Didn't even buy a lot. I did not buy a lot. Broke, I don't wanna lie. <laughs> I don't wanna lie, guys. I'm so broke. But my canvas is comforting. I got canvas comforting me and my broke state. I am broke. Because yesterday, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have white paint. And canvas and I have an exhibition in four days <laughs> no because in what world actually in what world it does an artist get a booking for an exhibition and they don't have work in my world yes in my world guys if I'm gonna work uh, work on that I don't wanna lie it's bad don't do that if you're a young artist, don't do it. Please always be creating work. I know it's expensive and you don't always have materials. Yeah, the point of what I was saying is that I spent 250 on paint. Then I did get my canvas from a friend. I got my frames from a friend. Regardless, I made two pieces. 250 I made three pieces actually yeah I made three pieces I had bought this other fabric I bought this fabric it was a whole street fabric it was cream I wanted to make an abstract fashion painting yeah if you want to buy it it's going for 600 bucks it's nothing no one of my friends has dibs on it <laughs> He says if he gets money, he's gonna buy it. But like, if you wanna buy it, six hundred bucks. I also have another one over here. I want third it. That one's that one's the price for the raffle, which not a lot of people bought. But I have to keep my word. I have to keep my word, anyways, and give away my painting. And all that. Mm -hmm. That's so warm and fuzzy. This is my money. This is my money. I had my money. <laughs> I'm so warm and fuzzy. So I made three. Mm. I made three paintings. One was going for 600. The one that was sold, I sold it for 150. The one that was left, I've, it's, it's 200. But it's the wrong one. My 
for Ethan painting. But we love it. Whoever's gonna win that painting, you're gonna make a lot of money when I'm, you know, when I'm, when I'm an established artist. <laughs> yeah. So, you, know, you do gain, okay? You do gain your money back when you, like, you, you spend a lot on art supplies, but you do gain your money back because you're gonna price your stuff according to how much time you spend on it and how much of a brilliant idea your stuff is, okay? So yeah, you can price your stuff. Like, my uh, fabric mosaic fashion painting mixed media. That, not to toot my own horn, but is a brilliant painting. So I am going to sell it for 600 bucks. And if no one buys it, it's mine. Yay, I keep it. I keep my art for an exhibition. But yeah. So like, mm, it's hectic. I did spend 250 that time on I supplies and I went completely broke yeah went completely broke did the three paintings had the exhibition had a good time sold one of my paintings for 150 lent the money to my mom didn't invest back so I haven't been doing I hadn't been doing painting since then because I didn't have money to buy canvas and yeah the money I was getting, uh, the money I was getting had other priorities, bigger priorities, priorities, priorities. But yeah, all I can say is it's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. It's choking me. It's expensive. But uh, it's it's like. It's lovely, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna cry. Um, I think I've given enough advice. <laughs> yeah, this video is gonna be long. No cap. Um, yeah. So that's it. <laughs>